Good morning, my name is John Schaefer, and uh, this is a workshop recording for presenting at academic conferences. This workshop was initially developed by Dr. Holly Ventura Miller, uh, who is a faculty member here at UTSA in the College of Public Policy. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be talking about today, uh, some, of the, some of the topics, um, are basically what are, the, uh, what are some tips and strategies, what are best practices when you are presenting at your uh, professional academic conferences. So first of all, where are you going to be starting? So some of the places that you are going to be thinking about uh, doing your presentations at are going to be uh, regional conferences, national conferences, and, and international conferences. Also, you might want to consider departmental brown bags. And if you're thinking about actually getting some feedback on your presentations before giving it uh, before giving it a conference, the best place to start is at a is at a departmental level or at a college level. So, in a sense, presenting it to your peers to your faculty, again, to get feedback before you head forward with your regional, national, or international conferences. So how are you going to get on the schedule of these conferences? So first of all, you're going to want to put, um, uh, most conferences put a call out for papers well before the conference actually occurs. So you're going to want to be searching for those, whether it be some of the associations you, you may belong to or are affiliated with or your discipline is affiliated with, you're going to be searching for the conferences where you can request to um, or put a proposal in to actually be a presenter at the conference. Most submission deadlines are at least eight months prior to the conference. Uh, best practices or, or guidelines, six months for regional and ten months for international and uh, national conferences. So then you have to figure out what is the best venue for to, to present my, my research or present my paper. So is it going to be um, in the form of a student panel? Is it going to be in the form of a, of a thematic panel, like a, in a, in a, just a general theme over, over your topic? Is it going to be at round tables? Or is it going to be at um, breakout or plenary sessions. And so thinking about what is my topic area and how does that best fit, it, best fit into uh, one of these types of structures to actually give my presentation. So looking at your presentation length. So typically you're looking at 15 to 20 minutes, questions usually after everyone is presented. And then uh, 10 to 15 minutes for PowerPoint slides, and, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, 10 to 15 PowerPoint slides and approximately 60 to 90 seconds per slide. So that's, this is very general. It very much depends on where you're presenting your research or what type of conference you're at. I have known conferences where you are actually presenting for 45 minutes, so you're looking at uh, 25 to 30 minutes of content and then the rest of the time being uh, question and answer session. So, you know, and then of course your PowerPoint slides are going to have a, f a few more than 10 to 15. But in general, this is, this is what you're looking at when you're presenting your research at an academic conference. So when you're looking at the structure of your, of your presentation, first of all, you're looking at the title slide and, uh, or we're going to look at the title slide and the introduction. The title slide is going to have the presentation title, the author name and affiliation, and any acknowledgments that you have. You're not going to spend any more than 30 seconds on this slide. And of course, during this time, during when you're when you're talking about acknowledgments and et cetera, try to avoid uh, tales of personal motivation only because this is going to take up a lot of your time. And when you only have a set time to present your research, of course, your research is the most important part. If you have leftover time at the end, maybe you can talk about, you know, your personal motivations, people that uh, maybe a little bit more detail about people that you would like to acknowledge that assisted you through the process, stuff like that. 
as far as your introduction slide, it's going to be one slide that provides an overview of your topic. And it's, you're not going to spend any more than 60 seconds because you really want to get to the meat of your presentation. So just a brief introduction about and an overview of your topic, possibly a slide that says this is what I'm going to be covering today, and you know maybe four or five bullet points, boom, 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 boom. And then you're going to move into the, to the meat of your, of your research and your presentation. So first is going to be, of course, the literature review in the background. This is going to be about three to four slides. You're not going to spend any more than four minutes on, on this information. Your first slide is going to be a theoretical orientation, if, if you have any. And then the next two to three slides are going to be an overview of previous research that has been done on your research area. And of course, if you're looking at an, um, a type of style or, or um, whether it be uh, you know, st style formatting, um, when you, because of course you're going to want to make sure that you're acknowledging, uh, referencing the, the previous research. So you're going to have your author, year, and then relevant findings. So this is how you're going to set up your slide. So your, your author of your publication that you're, that you're reviewing, the year it was published, and then, and then you would have the relevant findings behind that. Then, of course, the current study. This is, this, is your, this is your stuff, and this is going to be one slide, and this is where you introduce the specifics of your research. This is what um, you're going to be talking about in general. And then you're going to identify research questions as well. The methodology, of course, is your first slide is going to be data, data excuse me, sample and measures, and uh, any variables. The second slide is, of course, going to be an analytic strategy. The variable section may warrant its own slide if you have many variables or if they are new measures. So this is just this is this is a personal call, but just keep in mind that if you do have um, enough variables, and or if there are new measures, you may have to create your own slide just for that instead of just having one slide with your data and your sample and measures. So then your findings. So once you have, you know, you've, you've introduced, you've gone through the methodology of your research, now what are your findings? So tables or no tables, this is going to depend on the type of research you have, of course. And if it, if it accentuates your research and if it drives home your point, great. It's a nice, also it's, it's a good breakaway from uh, having, having a graph or a table. Uh, it's a good breakaway from simply having words on a screen. So you could have a graph that is actually one full slide, or a table, excuse me, that's one full slide. And that way, again, you're breaking away from uh, words on a screen, and it, you know, it breaks up your presentation a little bit. Now, the reason why you're saying tables or no tables, tables can be um, hard to read and follow if there's too much data on them. Use tables only if they're easy to digest, which means there's not a lot of data. It's really directly to the point. Highlight important findings when possible as you go through your information. Avoid putting up descriptive, excuse me, descriptive statistics. These should be included in the sample section of the presentation. So your findings is going to be a total of two to three slides. Findings represent the meat of your presentation. You know, talked about that earlier. That is why people, this is why people are, are here or there with you. This is what they're, they're listening to. This is going to be the majority of your presentation. Um, Avoid focusing on the minutia of statistical analyses. You really want to focus on the meat of the research, not necessarily the statistical analysis, how you got there, but really you're focusing on the findings, and that's what everyone wants to know. Um, the the minutia, the statistical analysis is going to be, you know, possibly, you know, during your methodology, and again, you're just it's a brief amount of time. Your conclusion slide, you're going to limit to one or two slides. Revisit the highlights of your study, what was significant, insignificant, surprising. Limitations, um, try to keep these to one or two 
Uh, no one wants to hear how your, you know, basically how your study stinks. Um, you know, you don't want to focus on the negatives. You always want to focus on, on your research and the positives and not why your research may not be, um, you know, may not be factual or, or plausible. Future research, of course, you want to talk about, based on your research, what future research can be done. Toss around one or two ideas of where this line of research can go. Again, the conclusion slides, you're not going to spend a lot of time on this. The, the introduction, the, um, the introduction, the, the, the literature review, the, the methodology, and the conclusion, those are going to be, in a sense, half of your presentation. The other half is going to be the meat, your, your research, your findings. So you see how that balances out. So here are a few keys to public speaking. Of course, you're going to want to relax. Um, just always remember, own your information and know that no one in the room knows more about your study than you do. You're the expert. And if you have any type of public speaking anxiety, this is going to help with that, knowing that no one there knows more than you do about what you're talking about. Always be prepared. Never wait till the last minute to put your presentation together and to practice your presentation. Uh, most people do not have just innate presentation skills. Most people need to practice. A lot of people have some sort of anxiety about getting up in front of a group of people. Being prepared and practicing will alleviate a lot of the issues that you might have regarding anxiety about public speaking. Possibly prepare note cards. Uh, your note cards are actually more helpful than the PowerPoint slides are going to be. PowerPoint slides are oftentimes your key points that you're going to be expanding upon. So all your information, all your thoughts, all the things that you're going to say should not be up on the screen. The, the information that you're going to be talking or speaking to, you can have on note cards in front of you, and that way make sure that you're hitting all everything that you want to say on, on those note cards and actually not on your your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Your PowerPoint presentation is a support source for you. It's support media. It's supposed to add to your presentation. It's not supposed to be the presentation. So make sure that you are the presentation, your research is the presentation, and that your PowerPoint is kind of helping people, in a sense, be organized. It helps you be organized, helps your audience be organized. They know the, you know, basically the the thought process that you're going through, that's what the PowerPoint is for. Talked about practicing. Um, Dr. Miller talks about practicing in front of the mirror or, or to your pet. Obviously, you know, to your family members as well, uh, to your children, you know, having an audience, uh, whatever works for you as, as far as practicing. Try to speak slower than you would in regular conversation. Oftentimes when people get up to present, you're going to be speaking faster than normal or speaking, uh, and oftentimes in regular conversations, people speak in general faster. If you have a tendency to speak fast, um, you're going to want to make sure that during your presentation, you're actually speaking at a slower speed. And so it may seem like you're speaking in slow motion because you're speaking very slow, but what this allows you to do, it, it allows your audience to follow easier, but it also allows you to make sure that you are speaking accurately and, and concisely and that people are able to follow you. And also what it helps with is if you have a tendency such as, as I do, and you've probably noticed through this presentation, is that I do use pl what we call placeholders, the uhs, the ums. And what if you speak slowly, if you, if you slow down your speech pattern, then what's going to happen is instead of actually using ums or uhs, there'll be slight pauses in the way that you speak, but it allows you to not put those placeholders in because too many of them can be very distracting to your audience. Okay, so a couple other, some more keys to public speaking. Of course, speak in an engaging way. You don't want to bore your audience and, you know, if, if nothing else, speak in an engaging way. If, if, um, if the topic you're speaking over 
is, it, or excuse me, it's going to allow the, the, the topic you're speaking over to just be that much more interesting to your audience. Never read the slides or try not to read the slides if at all possible. What the slides should do is, in a sense, keep you on track as you're moving through the presentation. What's my next key point? Um, that's why it's really good not to put too many words on the screen because then what you end up doing is because it's, it's an entire thought that you've put on there and you end up reading that entire thought instead of expounding on a key point. Make sure to keep eye contact. That again has to do with engaging. Never keep your head buried in your notes. That's going to be very boring to your audience. And again, it what it does is if you have your notes in front of you and you're buried in your notes, it causes a divider between you and the audience, which not only shows that you're disengaged, but then it's going to cause them to be disengaged as well. Do not memorize your presentation. Use your note cards because it, if you memorize your presentation, it ends up sounding very, well, very practiced, but very almost robotic because you're in a sense regurgitating word for word. It sounds very unnatural is, is the point I'm trying to get to if you memorize it. Very unnatural because you're not, if you memorize it, you're not speaking in normal speech patterns. You have memorized a, a form of text and you're just regurgitating that. And it's, it's, again, it's not natural. It will again disengage your audience. N try never to turn your back on your audience. Imagine if you have your PowerPoint screen behind you, and I'm going to use this as an example, or you're just going to see what I can do, even though you can't necessarily see the screen in back of me. But if you are reading off of your PowerPoint, and it's, it's one thing to just simply turn and glance at your next key point and keep moving. Let's say you do not want to be standing in, in back of a, of a computer screen or in, yes, in back of a, or having a computer screen in front of you. You like to kind of move around the audience. It's hard to do in this case. It's hard to show you because I do have a, a, a camera on me, so I have to kind of stay in one location. But in general, I do like to move around the room when I'm giving a presentation. I have my clicker in hand. And so I, I click to the next slide, and I may glance up at the slide, um, at the screen, to see what my next point is. But what I don't do is I don't do this. I don't turn around and look at my screen and start reading what's on, on the screen. That is totally disengaging. I mean, I'm sure just seeing what I did, if I did that throughout an entire presentation, it's going to be very disengaging to the audience. Make sure you are a true form of yourself. You have something to say. You have your own presentation style. Make sure that comes through in your presentation. Make sure if you are, you know, make sure that you're engaging and, and uh, you know, make sure you're, you know, gregarious and outgoing. And, you know, if, if you are that type of person, make sure that that comes out in your presentation. Again, all it's going to do is accentuate the information you're delivering and raise your presentation to an entirely other level. So in this, instead of just simply regurgitating your research for the audience, you are really giving them a show. You are putting on a show for them, and you're making them want to read further into your research, but also possibly attend other sessions that you may be presenting your research at at other conferences. They think, you know, that person was a great presenter. And I really want to see them again. It also will allow them to really hear your presentation and really learn your, pre your, your information. So they're, they're, actually, uh, they're actually, you know, um, taking in the information you're giving. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. They're actually, you know, taking your presentation and, and uh, remembering uh, the information that you're, that you're providing them. Okay, some of sty stylistic issues for PowerPoint slides. First of all, there is something called, um, you know, technology incompetence. And basically, you, you really want, if you are using technology, you need to know how to utilize it. Um, 
you know, if you're using PowerPoint, make sure that you don't use it in incorrect ways. For example, never use too much, you know, fill in the blank, slides, colors, fonts, transitions, visuals, anima animations, or words. If at all possible, stay away from transitions animation and animations. Um, the, what, what you, people get way too creative sometimes with PowerPoint. You have things sliding in and zooming in and twirling in. And this is, a, this is an academic research presentation. They don't want to see that. Uh, as far as your slides, of course, we talked about before, do not, try not to use too many slides. Your colors, the best practice for PowerPoint is to use some type of lighter background and then a dark color for your font. Preferably, as you, as you see on this presentation, it's kind of a light gray, which is fine. Uh, white is usually the standard that I recommend and then a black font. You're also looking at the fonts, preferably Calibri or Arial are going to work best. Any other font, oftentimes it's, it gets very hard to read. And let's see, kind of talked about colors with that. Don't try not to use any fancy PowerPoint template or you know, colors because what may look okay on a computer screen when it's actually projected up on the screen and also determined by the lighting in the room, it's gonna, it could be very hard for your audience to read. And then the, ha the point of having a PowerPoint up behind you, suddenly there is no point because they actually can't read it. <laughs> Make slides readable. Uh, follow grammar rules. Don't put anything up there that is grammatically incorrect. Of course, be consistent in your, your style of, of your PowerPoint. You know, of course, you're not going to want to be changing uh, font types from slide to slide. The structure of the slide is, should look fairly similar from slide to slide. Otherwise, it, it gets to be too much. It gets to be very distracting. Avoid red and green on the, on the same slide. You know, you, this is not a Christmas presentation. Uh, although I am recording this presentation weeks before Christmas, that's just a side note for you. Um, not using red and green um, to accentuate that fact, so try to keep away from that. Try to use your university's PowerPoint template. UTSA actually has one. Um, this, is, this is one of them. I think there's a couple of them out there, actually. And uh, just the, recommend you use your university's PowerPoint template, as, if at all possible. Okay, so when you're considering your audience, these are some of the things that you want to take into consideration. First of all, uh, you know, you may ask yourself, a lot of people are, are wary of, of speaking in front of audiences, especially during the question and answer session, because they're afraid that the audience is going to attack them or attack their findings, attack their research. This rarely happens. Most people are going to be on their best behavior whether they agree, agree with your research or not, um, they're going to be fairly decent to you. They're not going to attack you. So try not to worry about that. Uh, responding to friendly and unfriendly questions. Of course, you always want to remain professional. No matter what someone says, you're always going to want to remain professional. If someone does kind of have an unfriendly question for you, you could say, you know, that's a very good uh, thought, uh, something, to take, something that I will take into consideration as I move forward. And then you have addressed it and you're moving on. You can also say, you know, that's a great question, um, et cetera, et cetera, for future research et cetera, et cetera. So those are things to responding to friendly and unfriendly questions. Be honest with them. If you don't know the answer to something or uh, didn't take something into account, don't attempt to fool them. In a sense, don't attempt to answer a question with inaccurate information. So don't try to kind of fudge your way through answering their question. If you don't know the answer, just simply say, that's a very good question, and I will find the answer to that. And if you leave me 
your email address before you leave, or here's my email address, please email me. I will find um, the answer to your question. That's the best way to address it rather than saying, I don't know, or trying to make something up on the fly. They're going to see right through it. Not a, not a good recommend. I mean, I would not rec recommend doing that at all. So here are some related resources. Um, on the Graduate School website, on our online resources page, we do have videos for the grad speech, managing and mastering presentations. The, this present, that presentation is based solely on uh, presentation skills. So it is broken down into three parts. Actually, your presentation style or how to, how to give an effective presentation, presentation skills, then the actual development of your presentation, and then the effective use of PowerPoint. Then, of course, we always also have a presentation on tools to overcoming public speaking anxiety. And this is actually presented by our uh, counseling center here on campus. A very good video. Both of them, you know, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes long. And I would recommend, again, you um, viewing these in conjunction with this presentation. And they can be found at graduateschool.utsa.edu slash current dash students slash online dash workshops. Thank you very much. And that is the end of the presentation.